forget the cactus. Don't forget the cactus. Okay. <laughs> Hello, beautiful, and welcome back to my channel. And welcome to this video where we are going to do a full face off Path McGrath. I have had this palette from before, but I recently bought some of the like. The concealer, the foundation, the powder, I have the blush, I'm gonna use a lip pencil. Basically, I'm just gonna be using all the things I have from Pat McGrath. Some of these things are first impressions, some of these are things that I've owned and reviewed from before. And we are just gonna... We're just gonna try it out, see if this is worth the money or not, because I'm gonna be honest with you, you're not always getting what you're paying for when it comes to luxury makeup. So it's gonna be very, very interesting. And if you haven't been here before, if this is your first video here, hello, my name is Angie. I'm such a lover of beauty makeup. I love everything beauty makeup related. I love expensive makeup. I love drugstore makeup. I love finding new brands, finding old favorites within our collections. And I love playing with color. Color is my calling. Color makes me happy. So if you wanna see some more color in your timeline, don't forget to subscribe because I upload five videos a week. So this palette I've had for quite some time. I did get this palette as a gift from my dear friend Karen Harris. Karen Harris is one of the, the sweetest people I've met on this journey on YouTube. She's truly, like she's, she's not an online friend. She's not a YouTube friend. She is a friend. I've met her twice. I've met her husband. She is eight months pregnant. I am super over the moon for her and her husband. She's just the sweetest, literally the sweetest. She is so caring and so funny and such a good friend. I, I'm so happy to have her as a friend. I cannot believe she gave me this as a gift. So this one I've owned from before. And I also, I bought one of these blushes myself uh, lately and I have been using this. This packaging though, I'm not sure. I don't love the packaging. I don't love the packaging. This is a nude Venus. This blush is beautiful. I'm gonna be honest with you. I've used it quite a lot. But the other things are gonna be first impressions. I got the foundation. I have the concealer. I still <laughs> have the powder in this little thing. And I have a lip pencil. So is it like a full, full face? Almost. I don't have the highlighter. The new highlighter isn't available in Sweden yet. Uh, I live in Sweden and I didn't want to buy the one from last year because I didn't think it's going to be a good color for me. And this is a very expensive brand. So I don't want to just buy things willy nilly. I want to buy things that I actually think I'm going to enjoy. So let's zoom in and let's just try these things out and see are you getting what you're paying for? Because I'm gonna be honest, I've talked about these eyeshadows before and I've said these are really high quality good eyeshadows, but are they unique in my collection? No. Is that mainly because I have a very big collection and I have lots of things to choose from? Yes. But it's also like, yes, when you're paying this much money for eyeshadows or for makeup, usually you're you're buying to be sure you're getting good product, like you're getting a good product, but you can usually find good products at less cost as well but it might take you some try. So I think for me that is the biggest thing when it comes to luxury makeup. Like usually when I buy luxury makeup or something expensive like Pat McGrath or Natasha Nona or something in that neighborhood, I usually get a good product at my first try. Which is not usually the case when it comes to uh, less expensive makeup. But we're gonna see because I have friends that love this foundation, I have friends that love this concealer and this powder and I'm just, I'm excited. I wet my sponge, let's zoom in. This was a long and winded talk without even me applying some makeup. I suck. So let's zoom in and do the foundation. I got this Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Foundation in light medium 10, which I am hoping this packaging is like this packaging is pretty dope. I'm going to be honest, pretty dope. And these, this is glass and yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to lie. This packaging is pretty dope. I did wet my sponge already. That has a catter on it. Maybe. Maybe let's not do that. And I'm just hoping that this is going to be a shade that works for me. Okay, that went... Oh my god, this is liquidy. That went literally on the floor. Mm, yeah, I think this is going to be a good shade. I thought it was a little bit hard to find a good shade online. This was a light medium with a neutral peachy undertone, which is normally not my, it's not my shade, but when I looked at swatches, I thought it looked really good. I am more of a neutral leaning golden. I am not a pink undertone. It does not work that good for me, especially when I tan. I tend to tan a little bit more on the golden side um, than I do on the pink side. This is, 
this is a really good color match because I did this color match. Oops, I did this color match online. I bought this myself at, you hear this sponge? It's incredibly soft. It's from Glam Shop actually. Why does it sound so much? It's very, very squishy and very nice though, but it sounds a lot. I squared foundation on my floor. I don't know how I feel about that. But I did this shade match online and I have to say, I'm very impressed with how good my shade match was. This foundation looks... Doesn't smell like anything. It looks a little bit like my Natasha Denona Foundation X, but this is less coverage. The Foundation X has a full coverage. This is um, more of a medium coverage, but it's very skin-like and this... Maybe this is a bit glowier. Maybe I'm just thinking they're the same because they're both so liquidy. The Natasha Denona Foundation X, it's also very liquidy and that is my favorite foundation of all time. This is Samantha March's favorite foundation, I think. I think she is like the one that I can think of now that really raves about this. Is there a cat hair? I swear these cats. But yeah, that's... Do you hear the sponge? Like, <laughs> it's so loud. That's, I hate when I like expensive things, but yeah, that's actually really pretty. This concealer is supposedly very full coverage. I think I'm getting something here, like a pimple or something. I usually don't get that. Is it that time of the month that I usually get like one pimple every two months? And I actually did not have one last month. Am I putting this back in the box? Maybe. I didn't have a pimple last month. Maybe it's because I was abroad and my body was just so happy to be on vacation and forgot to have this <laughs> normal outbreak. But maybe it's my time now. This concealer. This concealer is the Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Concealer. I got mine in L5, which is a lot. I don't know why I keep doing this. I'm not even the biggest fan of a lighter under eye, but I, I, I tricked myself. I feel like I have been, ooh, I have been tricked by like the 2017-18 makeup trend of having a super light under eye and I'm still being tricked by it. I'm still fooling myself buying lighter concealers even though I don't even love that that much. I'm just putting a little bit here so I can cover. I will say though, I still love the triangular shape on me that works really good. I have a very short face. You can see my, my forehead is super short. So I'm trying to elongate my face. So I actually love having lightness in the middle of my face because I feel like that looks good on me. You might disagree, of course, and don't just do makeup application just because other people are doing it. Ask yourself, like, why are they doing it? This is supposedly a high coverage light feel concealer and yeah that blended out very easily yeah that's very impressive i know my friend heather austin really loves this concealer and even though her and i have not always had the best tasting concealers like the same tasting best taste <laughs> Her and I have all not always had the same taste in concealers because she loves some concealers that I really dislike. We also do love some of the same ones. And yeah, this one... This one is really nice. This looks... Incredibly good. I hate when I love expensive things, but... This looks... It looks awesome. I can't lie, it looks awesome. I'm gonna do a little bit of cream bronzer. I'm gonna use the Anastasia one. I really love that one. I think it's a really good one. And then I'm gonna do my eyebrows and I'm gonna let this set for a little bit and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna use that under eye powder. I don't think it's necessarily just an under eye powder. It's the Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Blurring Under Eye Powder. Oh, it does say under eye powder. But I usually use a separate powder for my under eyes than I do for the rest of my face, if I'm going to be totally honest, because the one that I use under my eyes, it works for the rest of my face as well, uh, but it's it, it has a little bit of a yellow tint, so it's not like the best for the rest of my face. Ooh, 
It's the NYX uh, Banana HD Powder. Um, and I'm on the quest for finding other things that are like that one. Not that I need to like dupe it. Because obviously why would I want to dupe something that's that inexpensive? Oh, I think I used too much. <laughs> Let me blend this out and do some, um, some brows. But yeah, it's such a great powder. I would just love to find something as good so that I can compare it to something. Not, again, not that I need to recommend an expensive version when I already love something inexpensive. I just want to have something to compare it to. I have heard rumors in the corridors that it's being discontinued, but actually, I don't think it is. Uh, uh, maybe that's just me manifesting, because I love it so much. I'm experimenting with some lighter brows. Let me know what you think. I'm just gonna try and see if I can get some... It's not that creasing, but I have very, <laughs> very textured under eyes. So there's always going to be a little bit of creasing for me, no matter what I do. I am going to use... <laughs> I got this out of the sequin packaging, and you know what? Not a single sequin went out of the bag. I feel very proud of myself. This is a medium, which is... It's very light. I haven't touched it. Ooh, that is silky. Okay. So I am going to... Ooh, but it still picks. I love this. I love when powders pick up. Okay, so let me make sure, let me make sure that I don't have any creases and let me set my under eyes. Yeah, that actually... That actually looks really good. Huh. There is a little bit of glow to this, not like it's glowy, but there's definitely a bit of a satiny finish, which makes me think that this is going to look great all over the skin. It is really kick up -y in the pan though. But I have set half my face, this half of the face is with the powder, this half of the face is without the powder, and yeah, it definitely does blur. And it set my concealer, and it doesn't make the skin look flat. There's a little bit of a sheen to it. I hate liking expensive things. But yeah, usually skin products, skin products are usually really good when it comes to... If you find the one that's good for your skin, I gotta admit, I, I, am a, I have a newfound love for more expensive face products. Don't come for me. I like this powder so much more than I like the pressed powder from Charlotte Tilbury. That one deepened up so much. This one just looks like a veil of satin blurriness. I really like this one. I wish I didn't, but I really do. Uh, I'm gonna use the blush now. Like I said, this is Nude Venus. Uh, it is very, very pretty. I'm gonna use this brush because this is the brush that I've been using for this one. It has... There are two shades that have a little bit of a sheen to it. It's this one and there is like a... I think it's something desert, which is more of an orangey one. They didn't have that one in store because I bought this in store when I was in Napoli. And they didn't have that one in store and I wanted this one because it had a little bit of a sheen to it. But I'm gonna be honest, the other one is out of stock. I think it's New Desert. I am gonna buy that one as soon as I see it in stock because it's like a more of an orangey peach and this is more like a pinky peach. I think this is a really beautiful satin finish. I think it looks really pretty. I don't have the highlighter because I didn't want to buy last year's highlighter and that was what was offered on the Swedish site. But if the trios come to Sweden, I will be buying those. The holiday trios, I'll pop up a picture and you can see which ones I mean. If those come to Sweden, I will be buying them. I really felt like I wanted to use this today. Today, this is from the Pixi Vitamin C Glow. Peach Dew. Is that what it's called? Vitamin C Glowy Powder in Peach Dew. This is beautiful. Don't sleep on this one. It's so beautiful and I really felt like I want to use this because you can use this. This is like a highlighter blush hybrid. And you can just, this is a Nabla highlighter brush. This is perfect if you just want to have like easy strokes. And I'm just going to put this on and drag it up so that we can have a glowy, I'm using very little, you can really pack this on. But I want to have that glowy, 
like blush draping moment. This powder is so stunning and so affordable. It looks like this. It's one of these like that you screw on. I cannot recommend this enough. It comes in a peachy shade for this year as well. And I think hmm, it was a rose series for this year, I think. And then they have two shades that are not part of any series. It's just part of the normal line that are other colors. Also so pretty, but yeah. I'm not gonna lie, let me put this, tearing this place down. Not gonna lie, I feel like my skin looks really, really good. Uh, like I said, I hate liking expensive things. I'm gonna do some setting spray. This is the Benefit setting spray. I really like this one. The sprayer, like, look at this. Do you see that? Or did you see that? Because it's like so finely, oh, it's beautiful. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. This is a beautiful setting spray. And it really does elongate your makeup as well. It just sets like a little mist. I'm gonna start with the lips <laughs> because I wanna try the lips. This is the Pepagrats Perma Gel Ultra Lip Pencil with sharpener. And this one is in structure. I, it opens like this, like a big one like this. And then there is a sharpener. And there is a lip liner. I like lip liners that you sharpen yourself. Let's put that on the floor. Um, because I feel like those are usually a better formula. This is that same darker nude on me <laughs> that I've been buying lately. It looks beautiful though. I'm gonna fill in my entire lips. Mm, really pretty color. I've heard so much good things about this, but I will say there are so many good lip liners, like affordable lip liners that are so good that sometimes I'm like, is it really worth it? But I will say just working with this formula, it has the perfect amount of creaminess. You don't want it to be too creamy because it's gonna smear everywhere. It's really hard to control, but you also don't want it to be too dry because then you keep tugging at your lip. You just want it to be perfect. And I will say, really beautiful formula it's time for some eyeshadow so this is the mothership 3 subversive and this is the palette that like i said my friend picked for me the packaging is stunning though because i mean you open this up and the palette is sitting in here that's why i've saved this box and also because it's like it's 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 a gift and the palette has this shiny part on the back and this is very heavy and very like luxurious and this is what the palette looks like i think i mean i do like these more like shimmery pinks here i feel like that could be a good look but also this like dirty greenish gold could be really pretty do we want to do that as something really smoky or should we do something with this like pink i mean if you don't have any indie shadows, yeah, this these are definitely a, a different formula. This is a gold to pink. Definitely a different formula that you might not find in other palettes. If you have a lot of indie shadows, these are not that unique. I have several things like this in my collection. And always when I mention that, there's always some somebody that's like, it's not the same uh, and all of that. But I uh, respectfully disagree. I do think that I have shadows in my collection that give the exact same effect on the eyes as Pat McGrath. But I do think that if you just want to go to Sephora and get something that's a little bit different and a little bit special, I definitely feel like you can get that with this palette. There are like two blacks in this palette. Is that weird? One here and one that's a shimmery one. Um, there's only two mattes. <laughs> So I'm gonna start with this uh, brown one up here, and I'm just gonna build that in the crease. Um, there is a fluff here. So I'm just gonna build this in the crease. And just blend it. I will say, these shadows are very effortless. Definitely very effortless. But I also feel like uh, Natasha Nona, for example, are effortless. And personally, I prefer the... 
um, I prefer the color choices of Natasha Denona. Not necessarily the quality, I feel like both of them have very very good quality. Although I will say that I love the cream to... Like the cream to powder formula from Natasha Denona is one of my favorite eyeshadows formulas of life. And I know that a lot of people will say that the special shadows in the Pat McGrath is their favorite. But the blendability and how you can build on the cream to powder and just deepen up any matte and how beautiful those layer whip mattes, it's just something special to me. But I think that they are equal in like f formula and performance. Definitely between Pat McGrath and Natasha Denona, even though I don't think they have the same formula. I just prefer the color selections of Natasha Denona over Pat McGrath. I think it's just a matter of preference, like what kind of shades do you like? And I don't think that if you really like the color story of a Pat McGrath palette, and if you think that there is a merit to like spending more money and getting something in a luxurious packaging and the whole experience, I don't think you'd be disappointed. But if you have a very, very large eyeshadow collection, or if you like makeup a lot, and you, you own like quite a lot of makeup, I don't think that you will have a new experience with Pat McGrath. Because uh, I don't necessarily think that that is what it is. According to me. I know some people don't agree, and that is perfectly fine, but that is how I feel. And I feel the same about every brand, to be honest. If you do own a lot of eyeshadows, and if you have, especially if you have like indie shadows, I don't think that any mainstream brand is gonna be like surprising you at this point. So yeah, I'm just gonna put this brown in the crease and then we're gonna see if we can deepen it up with a little black. Although I will say it's already quite deep. It's only two mattes in this palette, but you can see that this matte is very blendable, so you can sheer it out and blend it into the primer and make it look somewhat effortless. I'm using a little bit of the matte black. Not too much, I'm just using a little bit. I love using black eyeshadow. The trick with black eyeshadow is to use it if you if you're if you don't know how to use it and you want to use it more is to use a very small brush. This one happens to be from a Glam Shop. This is 0822, but just a small fluffy brush, and just where you want your eyeshadow to be the darkest, you'll just put a little bit, just to make it a little darker. Nothing big, and I think the biggest problem, or problem when I see people using black shadow and they're not succeeding with it, is that you're using too much product, or you're using too big of a brush. Small brush, small circular motions, I'm just like pushing it into where I already had some depth. And I'm just going over with the brush that I had the brown with, and I'm just gently blending over the edge, making sure that it looks somewhat okay. And you can see it's just a little bit or actually maybe even quite a lot deeper and more sultry on this side. There is a little bit of a almost, sat I don't know if you can see it here, almost satin sheen in these eyeshadows. I do prefer something that is 100% matte, but I know that that's me. <laughs> that is me. There is also a brown in this palette that has some shimmer to it. Or is more like a satin, like, or like a traditional shimmer, maybe? Oh, wait, both of my towels are on the floor. I use these dirty, icky towels to just clean off while I'm doing my makeup. So, what do we want to do? Do we want to do this greenish gold? I think so. I think we're going to do the greenish gold. I'm going to use my finger. I'm going to show you how easy this can be. And I just push this on. I have long nails. So I'm just pushing it in, pushing it on. And you can see how easy that went on. And here's what I think with Pat McGrath. I think this quality is beautiful when it comes to eyeshadows. But I think that for someone like me that really appreciates dark eyeshadows, that really appreciates experimenting with makeup and wearing colorful shadows and just having a little bit of fun with it, I feel like she is playing it very safe when it comes to her color combos. She does a lot of really fun duochromes and shimmery shadows, but when it comes to the mattes, they're usually always pretty neutral or pretty pinky. 
And I, like, imagine if this shadow were in a palette with some, like, grungy greens. Imagine how fun that would be. And I feel like I prefer the color combos that Natasha Denona has, because even though those palettes are usually pretty neutral leaning as well, I feel like they're a little bit more experimental. And maybe I am not correct in saying that. But it's just, I think the color combos are just a little bit more up my alley. This like sparkly goldy green, it's, it gets everywhere. <laughs> so when you start blending on it, you see I got it everywhere. I don't know how I feel about that. I don't know. I sometimes feel like people love shadows based on how they swatch and not on, based on how they look on the eyes. And I just... Like, you, you got this gold everywhere. It instantly migrated all over my eyes. And I don't think that this blend looks amazing. So, I don't hate it. I'm just... When it comes to Pat McGrath, and this is, this is like what I thought about the brand the last time I tried these shadows as well. They're nice, but they're definitely not my favorite shadows. I personally don't think they're worth this price because I do think that there are less expensive shadows that you can get for... <laughs> the fraction of this price tag um but they're nice they're nice they're just not my favorite are you allowed to say that i hope so i hope so i'm gonna use some of this champagne gold because this look is already pretty neutral so why not but yeah this is this is gonna be this is gonna be the look it's nice but it's not my favorite <laughs> i like everything else way more than I like the eyeshadows. That is my, that is my final verdict. There we are, full glam. I, I mean, I love how I look, love this. Love this, everything looks very pretty, but it's also very, very neutral. But I mean, what was I expecting? The last time I used this, the last time I used this palette on camera, I used this blue purple, so I didn't want to use the same, because it's a purple blue duochrome, I didn't want to use the same one again. I could probably have used this purple together with some pinks, but I do feel, and this is how I feel, quality is really good. It's really good quality. If you own a lot of indie makeup, it's not unique, it's not unique textures, not according to me at least. I just feel like what sells me a palette is the mattes, because I'm a lover of matte eyeshadows. And I feel like when it comes to mattes, the Pat McGrath brand is a little safe uh, and a little same samey and a colored shimmer is never gonna sell me a palette. I want the colored mattes. The colored mattes, that is what sells me a palette and I just wish, but I'm gonna be honest, I don't even think it's gonna happen at this point. I just wish that Pat McGrath would release something that has colorful mattes um, because that is what sells me a palette and I do think that when it comes to color stories I much prefer the Natasha Denona over the Pat McGrath but I'm gonna be honest foundation concealer powder blush 10 out of 10 looks absolutely stunning absolutely stunning i am gonna wear this for the rest of the day i will put a pink comment down below letting you know how i felt about the uh the longevity because the concealer the foundation and the powder is the first impression so i'll let you know down below lip liner is beautiful i'm probably gonna put a gloss on top because i don't usually wear a lip liner on its own but it really does work on its own it feels and looks like a matte bullet lipstick i'm gonna be honest it looks beautiful and i think it's a really pretty color do you have a favorite product from Pat McGrath that you think like this this is my favorite product and I haven't found something as good or and like this is like better and worth the price? Let me know down below. I'd love to hear about it. Have you tried something from Pat McGrath that you didn't like that you thought was overhyped? I'd also love to hear about that. I think all the things that I've tried are high quality. I just don't think personally the eyeshadows deserve the height that they have. They're nice, but they're not that unique. They're not the kind of unique that people are trying to sell you. If they're trying to sell you this $125 palette telling you that there's nothing like it, that isn't true. That isn't true. It's a nice palette, but it's not that unique. Let me know your thoughts down below. Don't forget to check the pinned comment. Also, don't forget to check the description box because I'm gonna have links to all the things I'm talking about, including links to my vlog channel, my socials, and my merch, so if you're interested in that. And I'm gonna see you again tomorrow for a new video. Bye!